So, unless you're living under a rock, you know that Elon Musk, Sir Elon Musk, the founder of Tesla, the founder of The Boring Company, the founder of Neuralink, and the founder of SpaceX, is putting up satellites to bring internet to the masses, to areas where people don't have a broadband direct connect internet connection. Believe it or not, there are places that still till today don't have a direct high speed internet connection um, near them. Yeah, about 44 million Americans still don't have that. So uh, what does Starlink mean? What is it? What does it hope to promise? And is it the option for you? Is it should you get it? We're going to cover that in today's video. Let's get started. Okay, so Starlink. Starlink is a company founded by SpaceX. Starlink's goal is to launch these satellites into space to deliver internet to the masses. Now, what's the difference between Starlink and what's already out there today? Well, traditionally, satellite internet has never been great with speeds of about 25 megabits to 50 megabits down. Um, these satellites can be found upwards to 20,000 miles from Earth, and that's quite far and causes a very high latency. So it's not the greatest internet connection. On top of that, it can be fairly expensive. So what Starlink is doing is they're launching satellites, but these satellites are gonna be in what's called LEO, Low Earth Orbit. That's between around 500 to 1,000 miles above Earth's surface. So it's quite a bit lower than traditional satellite, which will mean low latency and higher bandwidth. As of September 2020, Starlink had seven, over 700 satellites in orbit already and was already pushing out a private beta. Now, as of just two days ago, Starlink officially opened up for anybody to sign up with deliveries promised later in the year. Now, what does this mean? Is Starlink the right uh, provider? Is Starlink the right service for you? Well, for me, I live in a very urban area. I'm in the Silicon Valley tech sector. What I pay for internet and the speed that I get is far better and makes far more sense than getting Starlink. Starlink is essentially aimed at more of the rural areas. Keep in mind that America still has over 42 million Americans that don't have a direct high-speed broadband internet connection. And that's crazy to think of. So by giving users who fall under this category access to internet, access to Starlink, which is essentially promising anywhere from 50 to 150 megabits down speed, um, is quite extraordinary. You can just think of the possibilities that this opens up to get internet into the hands of these people that don't have it right now, that have to rely on traveling elsewhere to get it, that have to rely on their phone or another method, but don't have it at the ease of their house. Some of us take this for granted. I plug in, I make a phone call, and I'm up and running, and I'm getting speeds of one gig down, which is insane. Whereas there are other parts of the country, take for example, Alaska, a beautiful state in these here United States, over 40% of the people living in Alaska, that's about 400,000 people don't have a direct high-speed broadband connection. So these are the people that are gonna take advantage of Starlink, the possibility of just getting that high-speed internet from the sky, it's all they have. And so to be able to take advantage of this is where Starlink is really going to shine. Now, up until now, the only other real direct consumer competitor is Amazon. Amazon is launching a similar product called Cupier, Cuper? don't know if I'm saying that right, that is also promising to launch satellites in low Earth orbit as well and bring internet to the masses. However, 
they have yet to launch any satellites as of yet. So Starlink is definitely ahead of the game, uh, bringing this kind of internet and this speed uh, to people. Right now, it's we've seen reports from the US, uh, Canada, and I believe the UK um, that are getting it today with uh, more to roll out. Now, Starlink's promise is really to deliver, you know, high speed and low latency. And right now, because it's still so early on, you know, this high speed is really capped at the 50 to 150 megabit down. Um, but we could possibly see that grow and increase uh, as as the, the infrastructure gets built out, as more satellites go up, as more ground receivers get be put in place. We could see that internet speed go up. It may not hit down to the one gig speeds, um, but we'll just have to see. Now, of course, with satellite uh, internet, it's reliant on a dish. So in your packaging comes a dish. Uh, this dish needs direct line of sight to the sky. Of course, you know, a tree, a bird or snow or weather could cause interruptions on that. So you do need to make sure that it is kept clean and in a uh, low obstructed area uh, to reach, you know, optimal performance. So what's this going to set you back if this is the right service for you? Well, it's $500 for all the equipment. It's $100 down now uh, that is refundable, but $500 in total and monthly we're looking at $100 a month. Now, when I compare that to what I'm paying right now for one gig down speeds through Xfinity, it doesn't come anywhere close and it's far more expensive and not the ideal for me. As much as I dislike my current provider and I would love to give my business to Elon Musk and his companies. It doesn't work well for me, but that's fine. I'm glad that it's going to be the best and ideal situation for many others because in many of these rural areas, this price point and this speed is going to be at minimum on par to whatever else is out there, if not better. This is ideally going to be perfect for rural and remote communities where connectivity has typically always been a challenge and areas where there is no ground infrastructure ever created. So rather than have these companies dig the ground up, lay copper pipe down, you know, run wires everywhere, all you need is this dish, the modem, the wiring, point it directly at the sky, and you have high-speed internet. Well, whatever it may be, hopefully this is the right solution for you. If it is, let me know down in the comments what you think. Are you gonna get Starlink? Does it work best for you? What do you think about the pricing and, and what you're getting for it compared to what you have or what you've never had uh, in your area? I'm really excited about what Starlink can bring and how bringing the ease of access to the internet to many of these people, how it's going to change their lives, what it can mean in regards to jobs and opportunities. That's really exciting to me and anyone who's behind pushing that forward, I'm all about. So, so cool stuff coming from Starlink and SpaceX. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up button and if you haven't already, consider subscribing and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.